Use that diaphragm. Use that diaphragm. Push with it. Use your voice. Use your voice. Push with it. Push with it. You. You open it. All right, guys. Today we're gonna be talking about our turkey guns and why we like using them. We'll talk about the loads we use. You know how long we've been using them. Things that we like about using that specific gun, and then uh, yeah, answer questions that we may ask each other about what it is that we like. So this is our favorite turkey hunting guns of THP. <laughs> All right, so my gun is a Remington 870. This is a 20 gauge and it's a youth model, but I've been shooting this gun. This is the 20th season that I've used this. I shot a turkey with it for the first time when I was 11 years old and now I'm 31. And uh I guess for its 20th birthday I made some made some changes to it. It was getting pretty faded and rusty, which we'll kind of show you on warbs here in a little, <laughs> <laughs> little bit. <laughs> but when you was, really let yourself go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I was starting to just, you know, notice that it was looking kind of rough, so I went to the local gun shop and I got a Cerakote put on it. They sandblast it down and then put that on there and it will prevent it from rusting, so I think that's pretty cool because there's a lot of days where we're turkey hunting and it's wet but I've shot the same choke out of it for a long time it's a undertaker choke tube I can't remember HS, HS. yeah and they still make these but the problem with this one is it won't shoot TSS I can only shoot like all older style shells so what kind of shells do you shoot out of it right now right now I'm shooting a box of Remington nitros and then I have a whole nother box of shells that are three inch but the labels off of them so <laughs> we're just gonna go with it <laughs> but the thing about this setup though I've always just kind of said to myself if anything's inside of 40 45 yards with this choke and any shell shooting a bead there's not much to really think about if you got a clear shot it'll get the job done and another thing that I recently did was Got it drilled and tapped. I'm, I'm not totally sold on actually putting a red dot on there, but I may at some point just to try something different. Also, because it's a youth model, for years I've been dealing with too short of a stock, and the length of pull needed to be adjusted to be a little bit longer. That way I could get down on the gun and easy, very easily line the beads up. There's two beads on it, and it's most accurate when you line those two beads up. So to make that easier, I put two half inch spacers in there, which I believe gets me to more like what's on Warb's gun there on a full size uh, Remington 870. I like the pump action. Just feel like for me, it's nice to be able to walk around, slip a shell in there and easily shut the gun and not make very much noise. Just feel safe used this thing for a really long time and at one point I feel like I was probably in college and I was like you know I, I could probably get a bigger gun and then I started realizing that all my buddies that were carrying you know real fancy big guns were having to lug this super heavy gun around so I think ultimately prefer a super lightweight gun when I'm set up up against a tree and I'm kind of hunkered down it fits really nice especially now that I got it extended a little bit and yeah, all in all, it's just been very reliable. Love using this gun. And any other questions? Did I cover anything? I think to piggyback off that, the nice thing about a 20 gauge, just having the shorter barrel to, yeah. when you get in tighter situations, you, it's a lot of times you have, I mean, Greg just ran into it the other day, where if your barrel's too long, you can't always swing and shoot at something as easily. Mm -hmm. With this, even if there's trees out in front of me, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just stick it under my armpit and get it back and around that tree because this is so short. It's and even just easy. as you're navigating through br thick brush and stuff, it's just a little nicer to carry something shorter and lighter weight, which is why I went with the 20 gauge too. Tell us about Are it. Are you done with yours? Are you, yeah, are you done finally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this thing, me and Ted shoot the same gun and now Greg just got the uh, turkey version of it, but it's a Mossberg SA-20. I just 
tried to build this thing just because I take so many other people turkey hunting that don't have a setup for turkey hunting. I, I was just borrowing everybody else's gun and I'm fine with doing that, but I got ran into the problem when I was back around home. I'd just show up and people wouldn't have, you know, turkey loads or a turkey choke or something like that where it's like, well, we got to get something within 20 yards now. So that's why I put the red dot on it too, where I can just pretty much give this gun to anybody and just say, put the red dot on their head and it should, should kill them out to 40 yards. Which dot is it? Uh, that's the Defender, and I, I've shot the Spark Solar the last couple of years. I just like this thing. I like the idea of this thing a little more just because it's a little lower profile, and there's, like, the, looking through the housing, it doesn't cover up as much space. Like, looking through that solar, I found myself peeking around the barrel when I was looking for a turkey to pop over a ridge or something like that. There's just less in the way here, so I'm excited to try that. I rabbit hunted with it a little bit this spring and beat it up pretty good just to try it out before I went turkey hunting with it. and shot some rabbits with it so I like that um, it's a semi-automatic which if there was one thing I could change about this thing that probably be what it would be is I'd rather just have a pump they're just more reliable there's been a lot of situations where the semi-automatic is it I don't know that it's costing me a bird yet but there's it, it caused a lot of extra stress where either like this wasn't closed all the way or it jams up and the pump just seems to be way more reliable and we unload our guns most of the time when we're out in the field we just load them up when we get close and it's it's a lot easier to load the pump quieter so that'd be the one thing i'd change about it i'd say this is just the uh the choke that it, it come with i think it, they just call it the extended turkey choke i don't know what the brand is but i've just shot the tungsten stuff out of this uh our buddy shane was making me a hand load the last couple of years and i've shot apex stuff out of it all, all of it patterns well i what I like about it is, it is it's a pretty open pattern at 20 yards, like it's basketball size and it, it keeps that out to 40 yards, which I've also missed a lot of turkeys real close, I feel like, with real tight pattern guns. So I like just having a little room for air when the birds are closer. Other than that, one other thing that I would like to potentially get done in the future is just get this pick rail off here and just get it tapped straight in to the gun where the the red dot is lo sitting lower. where. If I'm, if I'm trying to find an opening through brush, the closer the red dot is to the barrel, the easier it is to find that opening where it's, I find myself like being sure and looking around more with the red dot sitting up high like it is. So Because what can happen, hold up, hold it up again. What can happen is, is if you're looking through this, this might be clear, but your barrel is obstructed. Which... My head's probably an inch above the barrel here, really. Mm -hmm. Where if you're looking right down, you got a pretty good gauge on, you know, if you can make it through that hole, so. Which can create problems if your wad hit something right out of the gun you're gonna be spraying shot which could create a lot of problems and I guess one other thing is I did get this dip last spring I think Ted still got his in the original pattern but uh, Keith's buddy dipped it in Mississippi last year and I think it looks pretty slick so yeah the especially just having the you know not a shiny color on the barrel I like that so. is that Cerakote as well it's just dipped okay so that it won't I don't think it'll last as long as that Cerakote but We'll see. Cool. We'll see how it handles the the abuse. The abuse, yeah. <coughs> Pretty slick. Mm -hmm. I don't have much to talk about. Mine's <laughs> an old log. I mean, that's it. It was 260 bucks at Walmart back in 1997. So I've got this. I've got the twin to it that's just like Zinger's uh, Youth Model 20, and I killed a handful of birds with it when I was a kid. Um, but I've been hunting with this since I was 11. And it's just a Remington 870 Express Mag, 28 inch barrel, like I said, come from the uh, carousel at Walmart. And it's got a HS Undertaker tube in it, just like Zinger's. You can probably look close to where, you can see my channel lock pliers where they've dug into it, where I've tried <laughs> to get it out of there. It's rusted in there pretty good at this point, so I don't know that I'm gonna take it out anymore. I've shot the same shells out of it for 25 years winchester double x three inch fours or fives i don't like the sixes as much i like the fours and fives the reason why i haven't upgraded to anything newer and better if you will is because i've never had these things fail i've never had a misfire with them this gun has never misfired those and i've hunted with other people that have used all sorts of different kinds of shells and have occasionally had that happen now maybe i've just been lucky Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as I have a misfire with one of these, I'll probably switch. <laughs> but at this point, it's... If it ain't broke, don't fix it type yeah, scenario. Yeah, and that's, that's the way my mind works. I've, I've used it so long and so much that 
I'm super comfortable with it and I don't want to change anything. Any turkey that I've ever missed with it, it was 100% my fault. Yeah, and I, I like my little 20 that's like his too. I mean, it's an awesome gun. I just started shooting and carrying this more. So it's what I pack. And a lot of people have asked why I don't have a sling on it. I don't really have a good reason other than this is just how I've operated it forever. <laughs> I do, I would agree with you though on the pump. Um, that's why I really like the pump for turkey hunting because you can just drop a shell in there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you can close it in and when it, and, you, and occasionally with the semi-autos, if somebody's loading it in the dark and they're turkey hunting, we've all seen that happen where they didn't get the action closed and then a bird comes in and it's like, oh, yeah, and they got a racket and whatever. Mm -hmm. With this thing, as soon as you hear that click, it's in there and yeah. it's firing. And we, I've seen people comment like, why don't you have your gun loaded all the time? We're always hunting with two people and it's not worth having something happen when you're walking around with someone else all the I time. Was, I was with a couple of my friends and uh, we almost had a hunting accident one morning with a semi-auto because they loaded it at their truck, which is what a lot of people do. They load it at their truck, then they go out hunting, and they did the same thing that morning, loaded it at their truck, sat down on a turkey, and we were all three sitting at the at the tree, and the fellow that was sitting next to me had his gun across his lap and got tangled up in some briars when we sat down, but it was dark, so we didn't really know what was going on, and he went to pulling his gun away from those briars, and it went off. And it, you know, I mean, he had his barrel pointed in a safe direction, but scared the hell out of everybody. <laughs> Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I, I get some grief from people because I pack this thing over my shoulder with my hands on the barrel and I get that. Um, but I've, I've seen problems with slings too, where you're hunting with multiple people. If that mm -hmm. sling gets loose or if it's not tied on your yeah. shoulder and that thing starts going back like that, you're pointed directly at the person behind you. That's what I was going to say. I have a good so, reason to not use slings is I like being able to hold the gun and maneuver yeah. it where I need to have the barrel. and. It's never loaded until we sit down on a turkey. So it's not loaded, you know, 95% of the time we're out there, but that's pretty much it. Um, nothing fancy about it. No, I, I shoot just the bead. I won't go to a red dot because I'm too stubborn. <laughs> I just have been, I shot the high school trap with this thing. I killed my first quail with it, my first turkey. There's no better barrel to look down than an 870 either. I feel like yeah. just about anybody can pick up an 870 mm -hmm. and just, the beads are, you know, you just look down at it and the beads naturally right where it should be. What do you got, Nicholas? So this year I'm doing something a little different. I usually carry around my, I got a Browning Maxis 12 gauge that I do everything with. Duck, goose, quail, turkey. I've always just had the same gun, no red dot. Uh, but this year I wanted to go to something a little lighter. So I have this old Benelli Nova 20 gauge that I bought in 2008 at a baseball tournament when I was 13. I don't know if you can do that in many other states other than Texas as a 13 year old, but I had the money and my dad took me to the counter and I bought it, but I haven't shot a turkey with it since then. I just didn't like it really then, but now I do because I value it being smaller and lighter and being able to maneuver it around. Uh, I did go to a red dot with this because I had one and I wanted to put it on something to have a, just a little different setup and like Jake, you know, taking other people. Uh, I'm gonna try to help my fiance get a, her first turkey this year. So I feel like this would be a good option for her. It's light, doesn't kick real bad. And then the dot just makes it a lot easier to acquire a target. Uh, I do though, like Jake said, wanna get rid of the pick rail and have it down lower because an issue I have with the red dot is when you're looking at the dot, you know, your head is just up off the stock. And I feel like that's just an easy way to form a bad habit of not getting all the way down on the gun. So if I, you know, shoot two or three turkeys with this and then one day decide to pick up my rusty trusty that just has a bead, I feel like I'm more likely to miss a turkey because I'm staying like this and not getting down into the, the stock of the gun. Have you seen Ted's stock, what him and Zip did to his? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got like a... They built it up yeah. so that he can, it's <clears throat> his, I don't even know what you would call that, but his anchor on the stock is higher now. Yeah. Basically, for the red dot mm -hmm. so he can get onto it yeah yeah what yeah so i shoot three inch i switched to tss four or five years ago and so three inch federals or apex i got a handful of both and just kind of reach in and grab 
but uh, I shoot number nines or sevens depending on what state you're in because some states you can't shoot number nines you got to mm -hmm. have something a little larger than that so I like both those loads I have it patterned I've shot it at a target at 50 just to know but with the 20 gauge 40 and in is what I'm looking for but it's good at 40 with this kicks choke tube though it does hold a really tight pattern like I sent y'all the video of the 20 yard pattern the other day I mean it's it's tight uh, and that could cause some issues for me down the road, but for the time being, I'm gonna stick with a tight pattern. I, I don't know, I like that I duck hunt with a tight pattern. I'm just used to shooting something tighter, so I shoot kicks out of both my shotguns. A I question, like it. A question that we get all the time is, what is your favorite turkey shell? And I think something that is pretty consistent among our whole group is, if you take shots that are realistic inside of 40 yards, it really doesn't matter what you're using. We just all use a three inch turkey load with some sort of turkey choke. And I think that that's gonna get the job done inside of 40 yards. I mean, we don't shoot past that really. It's like, I guess if you're trying to do that, you should just ask somebody else because we're, <laughs> we're not the person that has the answer. We don't hardly ever. We occasionally kill birds at 50. But it's that's almost like on the, accident. Really. Yeah, it's never on purpose. It's yeah. like... You uh, get down there, it's like, whoa, that's further than that's that. A, that's a few yards further and, than but that. But we know our guns can do that. Probably can shoot out further than that, really. We just try to get them within 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the key to that is just really shoot your guns, shoot different loads, find out what holds the best pattern for your gun and for you. And that way you have some confidence and you know how far you can shoot. I think that's the biggest point there mm -hmm. is everybody wants to know what shells to shoot, but know what your gun and your shells can do. Yeah. Like that's why I won't change. Yeah. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Just knowing what you can do with it. it th that Everybody wants a shortcut. They want to take, okay, what's the best shell so I can shoot the furthest and I can kill the bird through the most <laughs> brush or whatever. But that's when you get into problems is when you start guessing. You need to, you need to get experience with with something that works and then through time you'll understand better what your setup is capable of doing and what it's not capable of doing. Yeah. Uh, Ted just passed up that turkey on that video we we're talking about that, that he talks about his gun. He passed up that turkey and I think he was actually 45. But it was through brush moving left to right, like not coming right at his bead. And he was moving to the right with his gun off of his knee. So he's having to hold it up, you know, which is hard for a right-hand shooter. If you're going to your strong side, it's easier to hold it up. It just, every situation is so dynamic and different. It's hard to put a number on what you can get away with and what you can't until you just get in those situations yep. and deal with lots of different, different types, I guess. But when the turkey come back in the second time, he was right down the pipe. Ted was right off his knee, you know, 35 just yards exactly and done. exactly the way that he needs it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not trying to miss. I don't want y'all to see me cry on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I met, I've missed a few in the last few years, but I've, every single one of them, I know what went wrong, and it was all me. It yeah. wasn't that thing. You want to talk about your guns quick, Greg? Here, I'll just trade you. So anyways, when I got into shotgun hunting, like I was always borrowing other people's shotguns or using my old over-under and needed them to be like within 25 yards. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't really meant for turkey hunting, but I shot a couple with it because of the, the sentimental value of that gun. But then I got to hunting with Jim Riser, and he has such a vast collection of shotguns that he's like, here you go, you need, <laughs> you need this. So he gave me this gun and I've been turkey hunting with it ever since. And that's probably been 10 or 12 years now. And it's a Benelli Super Black Eagle too. It was one that he'd hunted with for a long time and had a lot of luck with, like he loved it as a turkey gun. But it's an auto loader, 12 gauge, with a Carlson's, I think 665 Constriction tube. I started out shooting three and a half inch five shot. I, actually, I think it's the same exact thing that Warb shoots for loads, except for it was three and a half inch. So it was a little, little sticks of dynamite. <laughs> I mean, it clobbered them. It's pretty funny. I can show some of the second angle footage of shooting it. Like it just, it rocks you. But being an auto loader, it takes a little bit of that recoil out. It doesn't hurt. It does, you don't really like feel like you just got punched, mm -hmm. but it, it sets you back a ways. <laughs> but anyways, it's a just an incredible turkey gun. Just have total confidence in it. I mean, there's never a question when, when you pull the trigger that the bird is going down. Uh, the sights on it are a little bit different than what everybody else has in that it's a uh, fiber optic front and rear sight, mm -hmm. like a traditional gun sight, which I really like that. I've shot bead, I've shot some red dots and, and this. I've, I guess I haven't ever shot like a scope or anything, but mm -hmm. I like the red dot, but I really like this. I like having that front and rear sight 
I mean, so you know, like mm -hmm. when you get down on the gun, you know, it, it, it forces you to get lined up properly. Mm -hmm. So I, I really like that for a site. What are some yeah, of the downsides to down, it? Yeah, I would just, yep, downside, and I like Jake alluded to, I just experienced this the other day. We got set up kind of in a thick, brushy area, and a bird came in, surprised us, you know, kind of off to our right. So I was aiming this way. I had a little sapling in front of me, and as the bird went behind a tree, his head went behind a tree, I was like, I'm going to swing on him, and I, can, I think I can kill him. But as I started to swing, the barrel got caught up in a vine, and there was a sapling there. I was kind of having to pull back and move forward, and I think he heard and or saw that movement and took off. Mm -hmm. Whereas like these shorter guns, like this gun here, I don't think I would have had that problem. So that, that is a downside is just the you know length of the barrel. Sometimes it, it may cost you getting a shot at something where you got to swing quick or it's just a little bit, can be a little bit cumbersome. It's obviously a little bit heavier to carry as, a, as opposed to something like this. This is a gun that I just got and got set up before we came down here. And this is uh, Mossberg SA-20 and it's the Turkey tactical version. So it's got the pistol grip. Um, Got the same red dot vortex uh, defender on it with a uh, Indian Creek choke tube. One of the reasons I've got I got this gun was primarily for Mindy. Like when she hunts, to have a gun that she can uh, shoot. So you know, smaller, lighter gun with a red dot. You know, that was one reason. Then a second reason would be like, you know, backcountry trips or something mm -hmm. like that. Just something smaller and lighter to carry. So yeah, I'm excited to get some experience with it. I know Jake and Ted have basically shot the same kind of gun for mm -hmm. a few years now, and, and they love it. So, what do you like? Yeah. About, do you like the pistol grip on that one? I, yeah. So there's, I do like the pistol grip. There's a few things about this. You know, since I spent a lot of time self filming, I've already found that, you know, having with the gun being smaller and lighter, one, you know, being able to hold it up longer than you know mm -hmm. that gun, and then also with the red dot being up higher, I don't have to get as far down on the gun. Like when mm -hmm. I transition from the camera, like when I got the gobbler in frame, it's time to shoot. It's not. Like I don't have to transition very far. My head is kind of already up. So I think there could be some advantages there, but mm -hmm. you know, just obviously need to get the experience with it. And, and do yeah, you, I'm excited to use it. Do you it. have these on there in case you want to take this yep. pick rail off, then you've got your bead yep. set up that I just, you like? I left that on there just in mm -hmm. case. I always keep my little <clears throat> wrench on me just in case something were to happen to the red dot, which I can see right underneath my red dot and see my bead still. But if like this was dead or you could tell mm -hmm. it was off or loose, I can just like if we're way back in somewhere, I can just take the red dot off and, and shoot off the. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a yeah. great idea. For sure. What's your biggest bird with it? <laughs> <laughs> I think I've shot a turkey with every gun here except for this one. Have like, you really? Yeah, that's yeah. A, Nixie. He yeah. killed that. That's impressive. With it last year. Because like you, I just borrowed every yeah. guns until I got that thing a couple years ago. I didn't. I didn't ever have a turkey gun. Yeah, I think it's super cool when people use my gun and shoot a turkey with it. I know you two have. Yeah, one of my biggest turkeys ever, that, actually. That really? Wisconsin yeah, bird, yeah, yeah. biggest bird. Huge. There you go. Long spur, that was everything. A, that was a pretty long spurred turkey. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty fun when you get something that you really like and you just feel confident in it and mm -hmm. you just have a lot of memories with it. It's like literally every time I pick this thing up, it's just, you know, having, having memories pop back in my head of carrying it ever since, you know, I was a kid and it's pretty cool. And, you know, all these guns have cool memories and I feel like we all feel real confident with them. Mm -hmm. So there's our favorite turkey hunting setups. Sweet. We kind of, we nailed that, you guys. <laughs> Other than Nick coughing and almost ruining it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's shoot them all off <laughs> yeah, right now.